This is not the Stephen Cobor show. This is not the Trevor No Laughs show. This is not the Jimmy Ellen, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, or Jimmy Oprah show. And it's not the Tonight Show. You're watching The Right Show. Which means it's time to show you some of the new graphics. As you know, Milan coming to us. His name is Milan. He's from Ottawa. Very confusing. Throwing up some new graphics so you can see TRS Live, The Right Show. And I'm checking out that squirrel. And how about this one? Boom! And a nice little suit. The important thing to know about this show is it is going to be a podcast soon enough. We cannot keep just doing this on video. Some people are driving, they're in the car, they're on an airplane, they need to listen to this. So we're gonna chop the audio out and make it a podcast. Therefore, podcast people, if you're listening and we're showing a funny video, that's too bad. You're gonna have to come find the live feed that we did and it's gonna be on youtube.com slash Comedy. With that said, it's time for you guys to get involved. Uh, we always ask our viewers to give your city a shout out in the comments. You'd be surprised how many people meet in the comments section like, no way, you're from Kansas too? So we want to bring the whole world together. And why don't you just throw your age in there as well? Because you're going to be surprised. We have people watching from the age of, I think our youngest has been 14, all the way up to 72. So we're trying to expand that. We want to get all the way down to three and four year olds. Because, you know, those kids can work their iPads better than, than grandma sometimes. And then we want to get all the way up to 98-year-olds. That's kind of where I want to cut it off. The same as my Tinder profile. Right at 98. It does go to 99, but I'm like, hey, who am I kidding? Why do I need to push it? This episode brought to you with the help of my pillow, which just arrived today. You're watching the official unboxing. You're asking me, Kayvon, are you sponsored by the billion-dollar company MyPillow? No, I'm not. I just bought it because leftists hate pillows. And they certainly hate my pillows. So I went ahead and bought one with some of the money that you guys have sent as a donation to support this guy. He's such a nice guy, Mike Lindell. And I said, I'm going to try that pillow because he's always waking you up in the middle of the night. Have you noticed Mike Lindell's commercials come in 10 times louder volume than the show you're watching? Hey, are you ready for a my pillow? It doesn't flatten and you can wash it. And leftist said, don't buy my pillow, he's racist. I said, I'll take two. So thank you, my pillow, and I hope you'll support that too. Next on the agenda, Nauru's is kind of still happening. Now, of course, it supposedly ended on November 21st, but Iranians are late to everything, so some of them are still partying now to this day. And if you don't know, Persian New Year lasts about two, three weeks anyways. It starts with jumping over the fire. That's a tradition. They, they run, usually outside, and they ha I, when I first heard about it, I go, oh my goodness, you know, I'm only half Persian, but I want to try this full Persian thing. I'm going to jump over a bonfire. Well, when I got to the event, it was a little candle in the parking lot. I said, where's the fire? And uh, they pointed to the owner of the building. He was an Indian guy. He said, you can't do fire. There's a fire code. No, no, no. Insurance. So it's like a big issue. So I was like, I don't want to jump over a candle because I wanted my Instagram to be popping. I wanted to jump through some fire. <gasps> I wanted people to be like, dang, is that a filter? I'm like, no, that's a fire. But don't mock the little candle or the little tiny bonfire because Iranians, they wear a lot of cologne and they're very hairy. You combine those two with a little fire and when they jump through, it looks amazing and the Instagram will reflect that. So go ahead and give that a try. Happy No Ruse, which they sometimes call Persian New Year. But for those of you who don't know, it's a Zoroastrian tradition. It starts with jumping over the fire so that the bad luck from last year cannot follow you into this year. <laughs> Boy, do we need that now. The fire burns COVID right off your body. And then seven days later, you celebrate Persian New Year at those events. Uh, even though the flyer might say 7 p.m., you could show up to the party. The owner of the house isn't even there yet. The owner of the home is out shopping for some last-minute supplies. So you're just sitting on the porch going, where is everybody? That's how late everybody is to a no ruse event. And uh, it could be fun. You walk in. They give you food. You're going to see a beautiful table. Okay? Don't start eating off of it. First party I went to, I grabbed the apple. Start walking around the party. They go, why are you eating the apple? That is our no ruse table. The table is kind of like a Christmas tree. 
So that would be like going up to a Christmas tree and eating the popcorn off of the decorations. You would look like an idiot, okay? Leave the goldfish on the table. Do not eat the apple. I found that out the hard way. The next tip I can give you is if you need to leave at a certain time on Nowruz, just start saying goodbye when you arrive because you have to go up to every person and kiss them on the cheek. Forget COVID. They don't care. Mm, thank you for having me. Mm, what a great time. And if there's 100 people at the party and each get two kisses, you can do the math. That's 200 kisses. Your lips are chapped. If there is COVID at the party, you've got it twice by now. And by the time you go to leave, the hostess of the party, usually it's a lady, you know, like an aunt, she comes out and goes, why you are leaving? Is something wrong with the party? You go, no, no, I just have, you know, I have to go. But why? Why you have to go? We are still dancing. You're looking at your watch going, well, it's Wednesday now and I got here Sunday. I need to go. So be sure to get your kisses out of the way. It's going to take a while and enjoy the rest of Nowruz. We did a Nowruz surprise show and uh, we had some technical difficulties on the Wi-Fi stream, which is so weird because I did a Zoom show, worked perfect. Then I started to do my Facebook show. Mm -mm -mm. Facebook, you're in, you're on my you know what list. They block the feed after 15 minutes. You can guess as to why. Maybe it's because I am by far the most famous half Persian, half Scottish. I've been called conservative, but I call myself a skeptical patriot comedian on earth. With that said, one way we can avoid all technical difficulties is if you come see me live. And we just added Miami, Tampa, and Washington, D.C. Those are all on Kayvon Comedy. Dot com. And now we go to our comment of the week. Every week, you guys are sending hundreds of comments. You're leaving them under the videos. That helps with the algorithm. So leave a comment even if you have nothing good to say. Just say comment for the algorithm. And it helps bump us up in the rankings. And we get spread out as comedians. We get spread out to all different types of people on the suggestion list because our video looks like it's popping. So what I need you to do is leave comments. But I also try to keep track of the comment of the week, and I want to try to find it here and put it on the board with us. So let's do that right now and see if I can share it with you. We go to share screen, application window. I'm going to pop this thing up live. And here it is. Comment of the week comes to us from... Bjorn Granvang, which means, you know, Bjorn means coming from Norway, Sweden, somewhere up there. Bjorn says, Joe Biden is the only guy I know who could throw himself a surprise party. I like that. I like it, Bjorn. That made me laugh. I don't know why. I was texting and driving, and I just thought that was funny. Don't try that at home. The next thing I, I wanted to share with you was uh, something funny that someone made for me, a little graphic. This is cool. I don't know if you guys saw the video and we're gonna explore it later, but Joe Biden happened to take a little tumble. Did anybody see that? If not, don't worry, we will show you. But uh, someone made this, which is a photo of Putin calling, we're gonna have to move that banner. Putin calling uh, Xi Jinping, Pong, the president of none other than China, and says, are, are you seeing this dog? And Xi Jinping saying, yes, uh, that fool be tripping. And that made me laugh as well. All right, enough of those. Time to move on to the next topic. We need to get on the same page with definition. So from now on, SNL stands for so not laughing. How does that work? Does that sound good to you guys? Uh, I thought of another one. MABA saw a beautiful young lady wearing this in Chicago. She could have been killed. Her shirt said MABA. I said, what is MABA? We've all heard of MAGA. What does MABA stand for? She said, make AOC bartend again. I like that, so we're going to give one of our favorite things, one of these. Absolutely. The next thing I want to help you define is Biden, B-I-D-E-N. Do you know what it stands for? This came from a fan as well. 
biggest idiot Democrats ever nominated. So from now on, we have a definition for that. Tell me if you like these in the comments. And probably the most important one, that's why I always end on the best, LGBTQ, which stands for Let's Get Biden to Quit. All right. Now, there's one I coined, of course, and it is that this presidency with a old, frail president that doesn't know what's going on can barely finish a sentence and gets lost when walking from the Oval Office to his basement is it's scary but hilarious. So I wanted to make sure we had a term for that, which I coined scalarious. It, scalarious is funny to me because I'm from Reno, Nevada, and in Reno, there is a supermarket called Scalaris. I've never seen it anywhere else. If it's in your town, please inform me. Say, Kayvon, we got Scalaris in blank. So I thought Scalarius is funny. Every time I go to Reno, I'm going to drive by Scalaris and be like, that reminds me of Scalarius, which Joe Biden is. And now, it is time for the difference. Every week we come up with a new definition. What is the difference between a conservative and a leftist? All right, put it in the comments. I want to highlight a few of yours so we can see what you guys think they are, and then I'll tell you the one I came up with. And we'll look at these great people. You got, I got no scalies. And uh, you look nice with a fresh haircut, Kayvon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People are saying Mike Lindell has a great my pillow. I love that. But we are waiting for the comments to come through. I will tell you what uh, what I define the difference between conservatives and leftists. Every week it's a different one. This one is um, probably the most important one I've thought of in a while. Conservatives work very hard to build something. If you see someone building maybe a, uh, a small business up or maybe fixing the fence in their front yard to make it a white picket and paint it or to fix up a neighborhood, they will fix it and leftists like to tear it down. That also comes with art. Conservatives like to make art. They like to make profits off of books, things they've created. Leftists, 20 years later, will say, Boo-hoo, Dr. Seuss. I can't make a book as good as yours, but I want yours to go away too. They'll rip it, they'll digitally burn it, and they'll ruin it because it's easier to stomp on a sandcastle than to build one. Do you agree or disagree? Put it in the comments. Another thing that will separate conservatives from leftists is how important you think racism is in 2021. So I'm very curious, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not that important, sure it's out there, small amounts, and 10 being it is the defining aspect of our society how important do you think racism is i will tell you that racism is probably in my opinion the most abused word in the english language right now because leftists are using the word racist as a catch-all for everything what does that mean that means if you don't like Meghan markle she'll tell you it's because you're racist against her for being 0.25 black. 0.25 is also 25%. Uh, if you don't like Juicy Smollett, who hired two Nigerians to beat him up and steal his Subway sandwich, then it's a questionable whether you don't like him for that one thing he did or were you racist the whole time. That's the difference between conservatives and leftism is how important we think it is. Danny says he finds racism to be a one on his scale. And he believes racism is a one, which is the same as Joe Biden's IQ. Very good, very good. Benjamin agrees racism is the most abused word out there right now. Rita gives it a two. And Rita Cabal, you would assume, probably isn't the whitest person around. But even Rita puts it at a two. And Daphne Emanuel says racism is 100% the biggest problem. In, no, I'm kidding. She says 100% she agrees. All right. And Sandy says zero. 
The reason I bring this up is obviously there was a horrible shooting in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was a deranged 21-year-old male. I may be getting some of these facts wrong. And right away they go, aha, he killed Asian people. He's racist against Asians. And upon a little further investigation, it turned out he had a what he calls an addiction to after-hours massage parlors. Of the eight victims, six were Asian, but he said that had nothing to do with it. He just wanted to end the basically what was drawing him to those places. So he was going there to end that in a very horrible way, and our hearts go out to those people. However, the far left was so quick to call it racist. Now, why not call it anti-female? Because that's not hot right now. Racist, and especially Asian racism, is the ice bucket challenge, hot new social trend that we're all supposed to jump onto. And I gotta tell you, as an American who's lived in the USA my whole life, I love Asians. All my friends love Asians. I've never met a single person who felt like, oh my gosh, there was a coronavirus. Let's go beat up some Filipinos. That's not happening. When Donald Trump said, the Chinese virus from China, I didn't think we have to go choke out some Koreans in Houston, Texas. We just, we got to go find them. No, there's no... There are no Americans who believe the Wuhan flu, where it originated from, are now, uh, we now need to hold Vietnamese people in Las Vegas, Nevada responsible for that. That's not happening. So before you jump on to the ice bucket challenge trend, which is let's end Asian racism, you first have to look at who is being violent against Asians and the biggest group doing that. Well, I'll let you put it in the comments to see how well you have been following the news. I don't need to tell you everything, but you should look up the stats brought to you by the FBI as to which ethnicity attacks Asians the most. And I'll give you some hints. A lot of Asians are hardworking stereotypically. They work late hours in rundown parts of town, but they've just moved here. They've immigrated here. They have a small business and they usually have a hundred or $200 cash in their pocket. So which group would would violate their safety, which kind of people just to take their hundred dollars based on, not that they're Asian, but that they probably have a little cash on them and then there's a huge size difference between let's say a uh, Vietnamese woman who's 48 years old and this other group. I'll let you put it in the comments, but just to give you a hint, they fall under the umbrella of the leftist victim class. So without saying anything, I have said more than enough. We don't want to get banned, but uh, thank you guys for responding in the comments. And I hope you'll check it out if you're not checking out those comments, because I would say 99% of the people got it correct. So that brings me to the question, is there institutional racism? And every single professor at every major university will say, yes, yes, there is. So which institution is it? That is the question you have to ask. Which institution? Because I believe leftists own the entertainment industry. Would you agree? Would you agree that most of the programming you see on the mainstream networks is leftist? So the institution of entertainment is run by leftists. Are they racist? They'll tell you they are. And then academics, academia, run by leftists controlled by the people who are forcing these ideas. That's a big institution. So they must be racist, but they won't admit that. And then big tech and then large companies. These are the biggest institutions that we have next to big government. And big government is run by the Democrats right now completely. We've had a black president. We never, well, he's half black, like the commercials, half black. We have Kamala Harris who will never let you get through a single conversation without reminding you her mom is from India and her father is from Jamaica, which makes her the first half, first half, 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 first. So if there are racist institutions, entertainment, academia, big tech, large companies, and major cities, then we can blame the far left for all the racism going on in our country. Checkmate. And one of the major things that we were told 
was a violation of another race were kids in cages from Donald Trump. If you remember, AOC went down to the border and staged a fake cry session. She was actually at a cage, like chain-linked fence by a local basketball court. But she made it look like she was in a cage and crying. And it was very interesting. So why are no why are they no longer complaining about what's going on at the border now which is far worse and we don't call them kids in cages anymore i call them kids in biden's boxes we have kids in biden's boxes all over the border and it's because he's made it seem like it's okay for them to come on over just like that old christina song which says come on over Come on over, baby. Do you remember that one? I hope so. All right. So how old are they? I'll tell you how old the kids are in Biden's boxes. They keep saying there are kids coming. There's so many kids, kids, kids. What they're not telling you is a child is classified as anyone under 18 years old. So how old are the kids in Biden's boxes? The average child is 17 years old, 363 days. Mm-hmm. So they are creating a huge crisis, and these are almost military-aged males coming on over by themselves, paying big money, and, well, it could cause a problem. So we definitely don't want that. All right, next up, we have a little competition. Who should win the biggest half-black victim award in America right now? Okay, there's a lot of chance, tons of choices. So I need you to kind of go with me and try to think of them. And uh, let's give you a five-second countdown. All right. First up on my list would be Meghan Markle. She is not even half black, but she wants you to think as a princess and multimillionaire, she is the biggest victim in America. And I see a lot of the comments, a lot of people, she must have come directly to mine because uh, a lot of people are saying Meghan Markle. And a shout out, by the way, to Arlene for throwing a little $20 in the super chat, as well as, oh my goodness, we just got a $55 super chat from Roni Vera. Thank you so much. That is so nice of you. I need to give you a big cha-ching. All right. So we're doing great and we are down to the funnest part of our show where we are trying to come up with and find out who the biggest half black victim in America is. Now we've already talked about Meghan Markle who, uh, well, she is a multimillionaire and a princess, but we can't leave it there. Absolutely not. We must remember Juicy Smollett's a millionaire on a hit show who hired two Nigerians to kill him. Uh, they failed. But he tried to blame it on none other than Trump supporters. Then there is a guy by the name of Bubba Wallace. Now we have to go back a full year to award this prestigious award, biggest half black victim. Bubba Wallace, if you remember, is a multimillionaire. He drives a race car. He, none of these people identify as white, by the way, because white is not cool right now. It's cool to be a victim. So uh, Bubba Wallace is in there. You might remember him. He saw a rope tied into a loop and immediately thought it was meant for his neck. Because as you know, in 2021, many, many people are being lynched. And I find it strange that a half black race car driver would think that a noose was meant for him. Historically, nooses have been used on every single race. If I'm lying, put it in the comments. But Robin Hood had one over his neck, or all his friends did, didn't they? And the only thing that saved his friend's life was that Robin Hood was such a good shot, it cut the rope and the guy dropped down. Do you remember that scene or am I the only one? Well, anyways, Somehow, they're trying to market it as if only one race has ever had such a rope tied in that fashion, and that would be Bubba Wallace. But let's not forget someone by the, no the name of Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah has been vying for the biggest half-black victim in America for over four years. He came here as a, a South African partially funny guy. 
He was immediately handed a show that was a hit from none other than John Stewart, a Jewish gentleman from New York City, who immediately put him in the position and made him a multi-millionaire several times over. He gets his own show. He gets to talk to you five days a week on The Daily Show. It's not the right show, but they try. He has a team of 10 writers. He has a $20 million a year budget for his show. And yet he thinks he is the biggest half black victim in America. However, let's not forget Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick was a multimillionaire. He was adopted by white parents when his real parents didn't have a need for him. Those white parents trained him to be the best football player and believe in himself and got him into the University of Nevada, Reno. That's where I went to college. He then went on to be a pro NFL player and almost won a Super Bowl. After that, he didn't pan out and they benched him putting another quarterback in his place. Since he was benched, when the national anthem would start playing, he decided to stay seated on the bench. Nobody talks about that. He stayed seated on the bench for quite a long time. However, eventually he wanted to make a bigger statement because there is gold in them there hills. You know what a 49er is? A prospector who's looking for gold, just like they did in 1849. And he was looking for victim gold. Because if he could make himself not just a benched quarterback, but into a victim, his millions could keep flowing for years to come. And by golly, did he succeed. So we went from sitting on the bench to wearing cops or pig socks to eventually saying, I'm kneeling to support all my black brothers. And that's why I hate this country and like Cuba. And uh, those are the runners up, I believe. So we will let you know. Now in the comments, I'm going to highlight who you guys think is the biggest. Uh, did we leave out Don Lemon? I didn't even know to look him up. We might have to bring him back later. Kaepernick, can't stand him. Poser, Trevor Noah wins. Terrible comedian award. Kaepernick, well, it is time. Chuck Norris should kick one of them. All right, well, you guys have played along quite well, but it's time to unveil the biggest half black loser in America. I'm sorry, I should have said half black victim. The winner is, trick question, Barack Obama and family. <laughs> yes, I totally tricked you, but that's just the way it goes on the right show. You might remember Barack Obama as the half-black president whose dad ran off to Africa, wanted nothing to do with him. His mother was torn, so dropped him off in Hawaii. He lived a privileged, privileged life with his grandmother, who was the vice president of a bank in the 1950s and 60s. That woman knows her stuff. She sent him to the best schools, raised him in the best way, and he went on to hate that side of his family, throwing his grandmother under the bus, saying she would often say racist things that made him cringe as she sponsored his whole life and raised him to be the man he later would come to be. Barack Obama was then brought over to Harvard under the uh, <laughs> uh, assumption he was from Kenya. He wrote and bragged about being Kenyan. He had never been to Kenya at that time. It's like me saying I'm an Iranian. No, I'm Persian because uh, my dad is from Iran, but I've never been. And he used all that to get his scholarships and his kudos and then went on to win the presidency after being a senator. And what was he before a senator? Nothing. So America voted for this man twice to show that color doesn't mean anything. If you wear a nice suit, but if you can stutter, if you can stutter in a nice way, and give a good speech and provide hope and change then uh, we will vote for you. So we voted for that gentleman twice as a country. And to this day, he still thinks America is racist. All right, it's time to move on to the next segment. And it wouldn't be a show like the right show unless we talked about the president. Now, why do we talk about Biden? The reason is no other show is willing to do it. So basically, you're going to turn on ABC, NBC, CBS, Comedy Central, Netflix. You will not see anybody cover Joe Biden. People have said, well, he's too hard to make fun of. There's not a lot of comedy there. It's just such a return to normal. I mean, where would we start? Uh, I'm not having a problem with it. It's going quite well for me. 
So I thought I would share some of the funnier things Joe Biden did just this week. Just this week. And then you too can laugh, laugh, laugh. We all saw this. I just want to show those of you who are catching up. It's Joe Biden walking up the stairs to get into the airplane. I just can't get enough of it. And, uh, well, a lot of people aren't saying what really happened. I have some rare footage. Enjoy. See, you didn't know the Mario Kart thing, you know, they're throwing bananas and if one hits the stairs, you're going to spin out of control. That's just the way it goes. Now, there's been other people posting funny things. None of them are pro comedians. It's just like your plumber is making jokes about Biden that are hilarious. And yet Trevor No Laughs and Stephen Cobor cannot seem to think of anything with their 40 writers and $50 million a year budget combined. I just, mm, I don't know why. The most famous half Persian comedian is funnier than them. It doesn't make sense. Okie dokie. Question of the day. Who does Biden remind you of the most? Okay, now there's a few options. Will it be Mr. Potato Head? Will it be a dish sponge? Is it Walter from Jeff Dunham's Puppets? Or you fill in the blank. I would love to see because I'm going to do a video soon about Joe Biden comparing them to all these different things. And we're going to find out exactly who Joe Biden reminds you of the most each day. It is, uh, it is really something. And I feel like that is why they're trying to get rid of Mr. Potato Head because they don't like the competition. They just don't like it. Now... The problem with Joe Biden not doing his best, and I never thought I would be doing this, but I am completely rooting for Joe Biden. The problem with Joe Biden not being up to par, falling up the stairs, um, tripping, it, it's not nice to make fun of the elderly. But then again, I didn't ask the elderly to take on the most important job in American history. So if he wasn't up to the challenge, or if his handlers knew that, then they shouldn't have put him in that position. So he's putting us all in great danger by faking his health. And as we know, if he goes out, well, how long until Camel Toe Harris takes over? That is the question we have to ask. Now, as you know, right now, I'm going to share with you what she's currently doing. She is Joe Biden's medical handler. And if you were <laughs> trusting Kamala to be in charge of your health, when she wants nothing more than to be president, you are putting yourself in a very, very bad position. Right now, she is just driving Mr. Biden. We've all seen that movie with Morgan Freeman. She's driving, but she's looking for, well, I've got my seatbelt on, he doesn't have his. Which pole can I slam this car into at 80 miles an hour and just speed this thing up? We also know that Joe Biden had two German Shepherds. German Shepherds are known to protect their owner. But what happened recently? Oh, the German Shepherd was a little too aggressive and had to be removed from the White House. Now, that's Kamala's way of making Joe Biden even more obvious victim. Once the two German Shepherds are out of the way, who's going to taste the food she's cooking for Joe Biden? Hmm? Those dogs were a defense mechanism. Who's going to alert Joe that someone's creeping into the Lincoln bedroom late at night in the shadows? None other than the half Jamaican, half Indian woman who's supposed to be taking care of him but has no business coming in there at that time. All right, so what's going to happen next? Well, guys, it's not that hard to figure out. You're going to see Kamala taking Joe for a nice walk. And, sure, it might be a nice walk, but that walk might end right at the end of a cliff. And that's what you have to be careful of. You see? You see right over there? Mm. You would hate for him to say, Oh, wow, I can see the ocean from here. And she goes, Well, then enjoy it! hi -o. So that's what you have to watch out for. All right. And now we're down to the final portion of our show. I can't believe it. Time flies when you're having this much fun. 
What is the next problem with the Kamala presidency? I believe a Kamala presidency robs women of the honor of being the first elected president. Does that make sense? Look, I want a woman to be president if she's the best and the brightest and the most inspiring, if she can articulate ideas in a clear, concise way that makes me say, mm, that's my president. And there's been a few women who have spoken, and you can put them in the comments, folks, a few women who have spoken and captured my imagination saying, now that'd be a tough, strong, nice woman as a president. But what we don't like is this backdoor shenanigans, put up the scarecrow, okay, throw Biden off the train, and now look, I am, isn't everyone excited? I was first. I'm the first ever. Yay. No. So I believe we should take down <laughs> Kamala before Biden. We have to find a way to impeach her first. And I know there's scandals. Unfortunately, she's not embroiled in any of them. The only person in a scandal right now is An Andrew Cuomo. And I was thinking about it. And, uh, and as people are putting comments here, they're, they're saying that they like people. They, uh, female pers perspective uh, candidates. Candace Owens would be great. Some people are saying, how about uh, Nikki Haley? And she talks, when Nikki Haley talks, you know, I really like her tone and her press. What I don't like is, <laughs> I'm <laughs> laughing for no reason. As a comedian, I'm very sensitive to people laughing at the wrong times for things. For instance, if I go, hey, everybody, how are we feeling tonight? And someone's like, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm like, whoa, this audience member has mental issues. That was not the joke. We're not always comedians. Sometimes are just talking and then a joke. I've done plenty of that tonight. Trust me. But the laughing. Hey, Kamala, are you going to go to the border? <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go on online and type in Kamala laugh and you will see how horrendous that sound is to anyone's eardrums. But a lot of people are liking anything other than the cackling of Kamala. Look at this. Candace Owens probably has the most. Someone says Christy Noam and uh, plenty of other people are coming up with their a lot of Noams. A lot of people saying Noam and then Nikki Haley. Perfect. So you guys are engaged and... That's what they're going to try to do to you. They're going to try to say, look, if you don't like Kamala Harris as president, it's because you hate women. And if you look at my comments, mostly women are commenting right now with other suggestions who they would prefer well over Candace. So don't let them use the bixer. You're a bigot, Islamophobic, xenophobic, sexist, racist, and now they throw the T, transphobe. No, just because you don't agree with me doesn't mean you have to title me. So the final... Thing that we're going to talk about is Andrew Cuomo, which is the most annoying man in America. If you don't know, he killed every single person in New York. Everyone who's dead in New York was because of Andrew Cuomo, and no one was safe, including people in homes, you know, nursing homes, elderly. Now, everyone knows if you had COVID, you shouldn't be taken back to the nursing home. They don't have... Have you seen what doctors wear? I know we wear a little mask and walk around with our face diaper and think we're safe from COVID. But if you go into the COVID ward of a hospital, they got the beekeeper outfit with multiple masks and oxygen and tanks. I mean, they look like they're going to outer space. And Andrew Cuomo's like, we need to bring those people back into the nursing homes so we can lower our numbers. We don't want the people to know that we have lots of infections in our hospitals. So I was thinking about how annoying Cuomo is. And by the way, the left-wing media gave him an Emmy for his talks. If you want to know how annoying Andrew Cuomo is, it's just the way he talks. He talks down to everyone. First, by talking very slow. It's like he doesn't think you can keep up with his intellect and the large vocabulary he's using so the first thing he does is talk slow and trail off so if you want to talk like Cuomo all you do is you start loud and trail off to nothing 
There was a woman eating a sausage. I told her I liked the way it looked going in and out of her mouth. I didn't know it would offend her. That I was staring at her and my nipple rings were visually excited. I didn't know. I didn't think that when I told her to hold the sausage with two hands and to eat it without biting the sausage, I didn't know that would offend her. And I apologize for how she's feeling, but I did not mean it in, in a bad way. So I hope you enjoyed Andrew Cuomo. That's the only way you can enjoy him talking is when I'm doing the talking for him. Okay, the nipple rings. A lot of people don't like Andrew Cuomo's nipple rings. I hope you will all practice talking like Andrew Cuomo. Remember, loud and then trail off. You go big and end like a guy from Italy. I don't know why he talks like that. His brother, Fredo Cuomo from CNN, doesn't talk. Like he just moved here from Sicily. So Cuomo is a fake. And I hope he gets put in the nursing home. And punished the way he punished his voters. All right. Here we have a super chat. Thank you so much. We're going to give you a cha-ching for supporting the right show. Instead of the wrong show. There's a lot of wrong shows out there. But thank you guys for watching and tuning in. And I hope my stream, my Wi-Fi has been better than before because I have really been working on it every day. Ask my friends, I'm sitting there going, how do I make it better? What do I do? And people are giving me, I got guys calling me from Bangladesh, giving me tech support, you know, it's amazing. And uh, I really appreciate all you guys tuning in over the, over the last couple episodes and another cha-ching to V be free. It seems like so many people are supporting a show that has not to do with radical leftism. All right, so with that said, it is time to say goodbye. I hope you laughed a few times, but thought a whole lot more. That's what this show is all about. We have uh, no corporate sponsors on this show, and we don't really want any. No big brands, it is just us. You guys have been so supportive, I can't believe it. We are waking America up with laughter, and uh, comedy is kind of a vehicle where you can tell the truth but it hits a little harder because it comes with a punchline. And that is where the far left is totally missing out on 75 to 80 million people that want to laugh but also think the news doesn't have to be, the, 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 the Tonight Show and the Late Show doesn't have to be Trump, Trump, Trump. There are other funny things in the world. And the fact that they are now avoiding Biden, it's like the emperor is wearing no clothes. And that's what we're exposing right here. So if you want to help the show out, there are a couple ways you can. Go on YouTube or Facebook or Insta. My Instagram is is growing the slowest. YouTube's off the charts. Facebook's good. Instagram, I feel like because I'm not a girl and I'm not shoving anything together, I believe if I would have nipple rings, I could be a bigger star on Instagram. But nobody wants to see what's packing under here so far all right and we have to highlight our hundred dollar plus sponsors first of all arjun came through with a five hundred dollar donation and said keep doing what you're doing this show is awesome it's needed and i want you to improve your production and i'm gonna keep improving it with all the money you gave me in fact arjun just so you know you'd be very proud of me as soon as you made the five hundred dollar donation i took my laptop to the Mac store and had them put a better fan, a better processor, and run diagnostics to get me a clearer stream, which I think we accomplished. So isn't it fitting? An Indian guy gave me $500 and $500 went right back to tech. Thank you, Arjun. You are the donor of the month. Everyone else is appreciated as well. Robin T. Joyce, Natalia, Jerry, and so forth. Then we had the $50 and under donor. I don't want you to think, well, I don't have $500. $5, $10, doesn't matter. It just shows you support and it starts to hit the algorithm and people start to trend and see that, which could lead to potentially a producer, so I'm not doing all this by myself, or 
Maybe the Daily Wire hits me up, huh? Jeremy Boring, Ben Shapiro. Or maybe Mike Huckabee puts me on his show. Maybe Greg Gutfeld. I don't know where this will end up. I'm just glad to have all you guys in front of me. And as long as I have good Wi-Fi and a clear stream, this is fine with me. Huge thank you to my patrons and the locals. I'm on locals.com under Cave on Comedy. And uh, that is fantastic. So if you want to join over there, you just go on Cave on Comedy. And that is the end of our show. Did you have fun? Did you have a good time? I'm going to take a few questions, highlight a few comments, and I'm going to get out of here. We went much longer than I thought we would. So here we go. Uh, someone's recommending we just make it the Cave On Show. Well, I want to have a Cave On Show and the Right Show, which covers different things. So thank you. Uh, someone said, yes, Ben Shapiro should pick up our boy Cave On. I would love to join that team. Those guys go pretty hard in the paint. Um, would love to see you on Louder with Crowder. You know what? Thank you so much, Diana. And if anyone knows Crowder, tell him I'm a fan, and he is very funny. Tell him Andrew Cuomo didn't know that uh, he would kill those people. Tell him he wasn't aware he was harassing his staff. I just love it. We just, we're just we just going to make fun of everybody. How about this? I like this one. Why don't we kick Noah off of his show and take it over? I got a better idea. Just put the right show right after the daily show. Let's see whose ratings are higher. I bet you can predict too. And Greg Gutfeld would be great too. We had a great time, Kayvon. Thank you, D. Wilson. And Jackie Bird says, Kayvon, go on the daily caller. Here's the one I like. Helene Tran sending me those flirty emojis, the kissy, kissy, hearty, hearty faces. I love it. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the right show. We do this every single week, usually on Wednesdays, right around this time. And of course, we want to keep making you laugh, keep making you think, and keep waking America up with laughter. Bye, everybody.